diarrhea. Hey rabbits, it's Trixie and if you think that I look slightly tired then you are completely right. My two-year-old daughter is sick and I basically spent the whole night bringing her water, cuddling her, telling her stories and singing her songs. Everything that loving mommies do. But let's just say I didn't get much rest and it's just a matter of time until I catch exactly the disease that she has. I already feel this tinkling sensation of the sniffles in my nose and my throat is a bit sore. So let's use these valuable last minutes of health to make a nice new video. Under normal circumstances, feeling sick when you're planning to make a video is bad news. Today, however, it's a good thing, because it provides me with the perfect transition for the topic. I want to talk to you about funny, weird and sometimes even kind of cute names for diseases and symptoms in German. So I'm going to compare the English names to the German ones. And one of the first things I found out during my research was that the German language is way more descriptive. In English, they are mostly very medical sounding terms, Latin words that don't imply at all what the disease is about. As a patient, you can only guess, unless you are a doctor or otherwise fluent in Latin and Greek. Okay, for some embarrassing diseases, that may be a good thing, but otherwise I really like this in-your-face kind of approach. Let's for example take the beautiful word hemangioma, which I most likely pronounced incorrectly even though I looked it up. Could be anything, right? From having a pimple to having seven legs. I mean, yeah, maybe you know that hemo or hema are usually connected to something with blood, but that's about it. I'm gonna tell you later what the German word for that is. Of course, the German language also offers official Greek or Latin in terms, but they are rarely used compared to simpler, more understandable, common sense names. To me, it often seems as if many German words are invented by children. The glove, der Handschuh, the hand shoe, shoes for your hands. And well, the same seems to apply for many German names for illnesses and medical symptoms. The German language is much more creative and figurative. It doesn't beat around the bush. Any questions left? No? Then here we go. I already mentioned it in the introduction, so what the heck is a hemangioma? A hemangioma is a harmless tumor, mostly affecting babies or toddlers. It's appearing as a reddish or purple skin growth, similar to a raised bump of moles. Hemangioma. Obvious, right? In German, the same illness is called Blutschwämmchen or Erdbeerfleck, little blood sponge or strawberry stain. And indeed, if you look at pictures, don't look at pictures. It does look like SpongeBob SquarePants sucked up a glass of strawberry juice and then decided to take a nap on your arm. So blood sponge, strawberry stain, point for German, I would say. Second disease on my list, shingles. A painful skin rash with blisters in the form of a stripe, usually located on the upper body or on the face. The German language has a surprisingly beautiful name for this disease, Gürtelrose, belt rose. And again, I have to say that at least the belt part is pretty accurate. If you get it on your upper body, the skin rash does look like a belt, starting on your spine going one time around your body. However, even though it sounds beautiful, the word Rose does not actually refer to a flower. In fact, Wundrose is an old German word for a skin infection. So Gürtelrose, belt-shaped skin infection. Which perfectly describes what it is. From beautiful to slightly nasty. Do you know what the German word for angular chelitis is? That's when you have cracks in the corners of your mouth. Like, for example, when you have dry skin or after eating a döner. Well, we sometimes call it Faulecken, foul corners. And I have to say that's kind of mean, right? You already feel bad and a bit embarrassed, maybe. Still, the German language has to put a decorative cherry on top of the misery cake. Foul corners. So it literally calls you rotten. Next up, the chicken pox, a virus causing an itchy skin rash that lasts up to seven days. Here, for the first and only time, I find the English term a bit more funny, because in German we simply call that Windpocken, wind pox. But the German language is not going to chicken out now. There is a disease where it's exactly the other way around. English calls it something normal and German connects it with chicken. I guess you all know what a corn is, this thick and hard skin layer mostly occurring on hands or feet. It develops when the body tries to protect itself, for example against the pressure of too tight shoes. Now ladies and gentlemen, in German the corn is called das Hühnerauge, the chicken eye, which is slightly disturbing. At least I wouldn't like to have a chicken eye under my foot. No chicken parts whatsoever actually. So uh, 
Thanks, German language, for making me more careful with too tight shoes. Talking about embarrassing things that may or may not happen to your feet, what about an athlete's foot? Which is a very contagious fungal infection on your feet's skin. Here's the perfect example for the in-your-face approach of the German language. We call it Fußpilz, foot fungus. And even though that doesn't sound that charming, it is what it is, right? What I'm trying to say is, isn't the English term athlete's foot a bit euphemistic? Ew, what's that on your feet? Well, <laughs> Evelyn, from going to the swimming pool every other day to train my gorgeous biceps and six-pack, I have athlete's foot. That means I work out and I'm sporty and strong. Sure that's not leprosy? <laughs> that was the worst fake sneeze in history. If you have the sniffles and teary eyes, especially during certain seasons, then it's quite likely that you suffer from hay fever, a nose inflammation caused by allergens in the air, for example pollen or dust. Now the German word for hay fever is quite similar, but a bit cuter and more accurate, I would say. We call it heu schnupfen, the hay sniffles. But the sniffles could also mean that you simply caught a cold. Like it's my fate very soon. Unfortunately, a cold comes with many other symptoms as well. For example, coughing, having a sore throat or having the chills. That's when you're feeling cold and you cannot stop shivering even though it's actually pretty warm in your house and most likely you're gonna have a fever too. In German, this couldn't be named more accurately. It's called Schüttelfrost, shiver frost, which just nails it because it contains the shivering part and the freaking cold part. Not usually connected to having a cold, but also a very common diarrhea. And I just love this one. You love diarrhea? Is that why it comes out of your mouth every time you make a video? No, I mean, I like the German name for diarrhea. It is just so brutally honest. Germans call diarrhea Durchfall, fall through. And I mean, if we are honest. But wait a second, you didn't describe what diarrhea is, you did this for all the other diseases. Oh come on, everyone knows that. You just want me to talk about poop. No Trixie, seriously, enlighten me, what is diarrhea? <sighs> okay, so it's a very loose or watery big business. Imagine chocolate pudding or a cocoa drink coming out of your butt. Ew, Trixie, you're so disgusting. It's no surprise that your views are going down lately. But you... Transition, transition... Mmm, chocolate pudding. Who else is hungry right now? Another symptom that I personally suffer from every day are the munchies. That's when you're super hungry, craving a very specific, most likely unhealthy kind of food. And not only a spoonful. You want tons of it. Even though, point to English, because munchies is just too cute a word, the German name is not that bad either. We call a ravenous appetite Heißhunger, hot appetite. And it makes a lot of sense, because you really are on fire, eating loads and loads of treats and snacks. Story of my life. <laughs> Leading me directly to the next term on my list. When you eat or drink too fast, it may happen that you get hiccups. You know. <laughs> This also has a very cute name in German. It's called Schluck auf, literally meaning swallow up. I don't know about you guys, but I usually find hiccups pretty funny. Unless it's this extremely stubborn kind of hiccups that lasts for hours and you cannot get rid of it. That usually drives me nuts at some point and I get super mad. Sometimes it's that bad that my muscles start aching from having hiccups. Why am I telling you this? Because there is a very funny word for aching muscles in German. No matter if this happened to you because of hiccups or after working out, in German you can call a muscle ache Muskelkater. A muscle male cat. Okay, so let's make up a little story. How may this be related? When your muscles ache after a long workout, then you want to stay on the couch and lick your wounds like a defeated male cat that got into a fight with a component? I would say German nails it again. And that's not even all the male cats that we have. Another uncomfortable feeling that Germans describe as a kata is a hangover. They literally say, oh, I have such a male cat. However, I have to disappoint you. Kata is not actually related to the cat. Instead, it derives from kata, which is an old German word for a cold. So whenever your muscles ache or you're hangover, you're actually having a cold in German. Does that make it legit to call in sick at work after drinking too much on the weekend? 
never happened to me. Just asking. Are we finally done with this video now? It's super long again. I'm still sick from you talking about diarrhea. Almost. Just one more. My very favorite. Have you ever suffered from lumbago, a low back pain? It can have many different reasons. For example, lifting up something heavy or hard physical work in general. In German, this disease has a very fantastic name. It's called der Hexenschuss, the witch shot. Okay, it may sound a bit far-fetched, but think about it. If you have a very strong pain in your lower back, you start walking like this. And does that remind you of something? Exactly. A humpback witch. Oh, German language, you did it again. When it comes to finding words, you simply nail it. You nail it. And you never fail to amaze us. On this note, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up because that would make me really, really happy. Do you know other weird, funny, cute, ugly words for diseases in German or in any other language? Did you like these very figurative German terms or do you prefer the English approach. Let me know what you think in the comments right here. You can't get enough of Don't Trust the Rabbit? Well, then why not follow me on social media? Here you can find my Twitter, Instagram and Facebook accounts. And here is a video that you should definitely check out as well. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this one. And if you want to support my channel even a bit more, then you can also find me on Patreon. I would really, really, really appreciate your help. Now I wish you all a very beautiful day. Stay healthy and hopefully until next time. Bye!